Waiting for it to say it's online on the uh, YouTube end here. I don't know if it's YouTube has to catch up or what. We'll find out after this one. I don't know if it's actually started recording and sending directly out. All right, here we go. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the very first ever special report from the GMA Transmission Station. I am here today, James Leffingwell, and a.k.a. Bahamut Mega. I am joined today by Kate Harmon, the token female. Kate Monster. Kate Monster. And Michael Deal, the token minority. Hello. <laughs> Buenos dias. Buenos tardes. <laughs> oh, man. Alrighty. Um, as this is the inaugural special report, we're just going to go ahead and kind of jump right into it. Uh, we will do another show later uh, in the week that will be outlining all of our plans for all of GMA's future content for the year 2016. It'll be outlining what you can expect to see from our regular podcasts. Obviously, our first podcast being a special report is kind of crazy and insane and awesome. But hey, we're rolling with it. Crazy things happened today, way before we were ready to start doing the initial news show. So, here we are. Um, seeing as how it was uh, Kate who found this article, do you want to go ahead and just kind of start us off with the basics of the craziness that you have found today? Alright, so, the 80s console it, distributor ColecoVision has... Is in development of a new console, cartridge-based console called the Coleco Chameleon, and it's said to be shown at the New York Toy Show in 2016 February. Does that seem insanely soon to anyone else? <laughs> well, you gotta think they, according to the article. They got back into the business around 2005. Hmm. They got into the work for a uh, while. Yeah, but come on. To, to, to have, like, no leaks or anything, to have, you know, our first pictures of, you know, what it might look like and, you know, all this kind of stuff. Like, the fact that, you know, as far as I know, we haven't heard anything about any of this until this moment. Yeah, I. this is the first I've seen of it. And even the distributor is really weird. The people that are... Uh, yeah, the manufa- I think it's the manufacturer, according to the yeah, article. The manufacturer people. Retro Video Game Systems. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is that the most generic company name you've ever heard in your life? Mm-hmm. I just... Man. Um, I think this kind of... The big question on my mind, and I think it should be our first main discussion point here, is does anyone does anyone really, really think, for even a moment, that this is actually going to be designed in any way, shape, or form to actually compete with the big three? That's what I was thinking about right before we got into this. I'm not sure if it's going to, well, from the article, it seems to be, targeting gamers who are strictly retro style games mm. in the article it says 8 16 and 32 bit styles that mm-hmm. seems to be it if they're trying to carve out a niche just for that they're going up not against the big three they're going up against things like the retron system that's out yeah, I was thinking more because, I mean, because obviously, well, I, I say obviously, but it, it might not be obviously. Um, I assume that indie devs and third-party devs will be able to develop for this thing. So I look at more as almost like an OUYA competitor. You mean the failed OUYA project? Yes. Hey, it came out, it launched, people bought them, some people. <laughs> and then it tanked. And then it tanked hard. Yeah. The, the thing, I I see this being a good thing, though, because I am honestly sick and tired of seeing the 8, 16-bit, and 32-bit games get thrown onto our brand-new PS4 consoles that have the best graphics card, and they're throwing that at it. I mean, I'm of two minds on that. I mean, yes, that, that that's a fair point to make, 
but also the fact that you get to now play those games, stuff like Rogue Legacy and Shovel Knight and Binding of Isaac, Super Meat Boy, these kind of things, on a system where most likely most of your friends are playing that has, you know, your profile attached to it with things like trophies, with things like, you know, letting your friends know what you just bought, letting your friends know what you're playing, so on and so forth. And it it's, it's having it in that ecosystem and having everything that, like, the PS4 and the Xbox One bring to the table as support concepts that wrap around having those kind of retro style games on the PS4 and Xbox one being a nice thing. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be kind of sad if that did disappear. I can see that. I really can, but whenever you have the few diamonds in the rough, like shovel Knight and some of the other games you mentioned it, that's all well and good. But then you're having everybody get into the pot and you're turning out just 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit just for the sake of putting it out there. Hmm. But, I mean, it, it's still not as bad as Steam, whereas Steam just literally yeah. lets any kind of trash and garbage on there. They've, they've completely opened the floodgate. At least everything that ends up on these storefronts has to go through QA, has to go through quality, and has to go through what used to be called, you know, going gold. You know. What's this quality assurance thing you're talking about? Yeah, sometimes I question that. <sighs> That's a topic for another discussion. <laughs> <laughs> That's a two-hour podcast on its own. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I can see where you're coming from. It's just... Well... It gives... them another outlet to strive towards... I mean, you can go the PS4 route of actually putting out your product, or you can go the extremely retro. That's what you're going to be trying to go for on the Glico Chameleon. Now. And maybe it's the cynical bastard in me, which grows ever greater by the day. Um, but the whole the whole idea of having it as cartridges... There's basically two ways they can go with this, and one way feels really cheap and screwed, and another way is going to bite them in the ass, which they have two options. Option number one is that they develop their own chipsets, their own you know processor, their own coding, and everything else, so that they can make their own cartridges that use you know pin systems like we had with the NES, where you had you know the seventy-two pin system. Mm -hmm. But if you design your games to work like that and design them to load like that, it's going to make it incredibly difficult and incredibly possibly expensive to try to get third-party developers on board because their coding and their design and everything is not going to work on it the way that it would if you just dropped it onto a PC-like platform. So it's going to make getting people willing to create ports and bring content over incredibly difficult to shoot them in the foot and the other option is basically that these cartridges are nothing more than a glorified flash drive or micro sd card inside of a big plastic housing well let me read through this little tidbit from the article itself the console's defining quality is its reversion to game cartridges a technology that hasn't been a major in a major console since the n64 mm -hmm. All game cartridges will include high quality plastic clamshell cases with illustrated instruction manuals and game developer linear notes. Mm -hmm. Which is all fine and dandy, but are we talking cartridges, cartridges in like the sense of all the pins and all the craziness, or are we talking a cartridge? like a DS cart or a Vita cart that's just inside of a big clamshell housing to make it look like a retro-style game. That's kind of a big mystery with this article. It doesn't actually say that. But um, I'm thinking they're going to have to go with either a flash drive or a, you know, a USB or a micro SD method. Yeah, some kind of flash storage. 
just to get the content that the people are putting, the developers are putting out nowadays, onto a cartridge. Mm. Because if you look back at you know N64 games and NES games and SNES games and all that, they were tiny compared to modern games. Mm. Yeah, I mean, even file size, anyone who's ever used an emulator and has ever downloaded ROMs knows that, like, the original Super Mario 64, I think, is less than 200 megabytes in size. Yeah. I think it's well less than 200 megabytes. It might even be less than 100. It's been a long time since I've messed with emulation, so... But uh, it's it's incredibly tiny. I mean, there's in 64 ROMs, which are, you know, 64-bit games that are, you know, under 50 megs, easy. I was going to say, if we're taking the article at face value, quote, the Coleco Chameleon, a modern machine that will play games stored on plastic cartridges. Mm -hmm. That leaves a A lot lot to interpretation. (laughs) Yes, it does. And that's what we're here for at GMA is to ask these questions. (laughs) Well, speaking of which, um, what do you guys think about the name, the Chameleon? Um, Chameleon... For it being a black box with some shiny lettering, with the name Chameleon, it makes zero sense to me. I was expecting something big, bright, and colorful. Mm. The controller is a bit of a loss for me. It looks like a glorified Sega ripoff. Because it's got it's got two joysticks, a D pad, and then your X, Y, A, and B buttons. Yeah, and it's ripping off the Nintendo, the 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 the, the modern Nintendo thing of putting both the analog sticks at the top of the controller. Yeah. Which I don't like that at all. Yeah, I hear it. You got something mesh. It looks... Okay. You got the modern Nintendo there. I can see that. You got the buttons from Xbox. X, Y, A, and B. The D-pad. And then you... you I, I'll give them one thing. I do like they kept the start and select buttons, but that's just my retro gamer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, I mean, it, man, I, I look at these pictures, and there's a part of me that it feels like a bad, generic, crappy Kickstarter thumbnail. What? Um, it technically was. <laughs> well, no, it wasn't. A, I believe the article says it was on uh, originally on Indiegogo. Yeah. It attempted to raise nearly $2 million on Indiegogo. You like the word attempted, by the way? Yeah. Ended the campaign with just over 80000 Yep. So, who's like, who's funding this? We know who the manufacturer is, but who's actually fitting the bill for this? It has to be Coleco Vision. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Coleco Vision will also attempt a crowdfunding campaign, this time on Kickstarter. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> you're, you're, I'm one of those people that have zero love for retro games. Like, almost zero love. I like the N64. That's as far back as I can go. Which I think, to be fair, it might be a good idea to point out your age to the listeners. Uh, I'm 21. Yeah. I, I tried playing NES games. You know, it just, it didn't, it wasn't to my taste. Hmm. But the the N sixty four was pretty good. I'll give them that. But this just looks cheap. <laughs> yeah. I, I hate to say it, it does. Hmm. As cheap as it may look, it looks like it has some wireless capability. Yeah, the controllers are wireless. Which. <laughs> Come on, how sad would it be if that wasn't the case? That would just be real depressing. At that point, you're literally going retro for retro's sake and inconveniencing the consumer. Exactly. Watch the uh, actual distance away from the console. You have to even use your controller. It's probably going to be like three feet. <laughs> Which, hey, hey. Hey, if you've ever looked at any ad or any commercial from back in the day with, you know, the old consoles and the CRT TVs, like, every kid was sitting one foot away from the TV anyways. True. But we've gotten spoiled. <laughs> Except for James. 
Hey. And I got the biggest TV of the crew. Oh. <laughs> Hey, mine's a close second. It is. It is a close second. <laughs> oh, man. And when see is how we are talking about the look, um, well, let's go ahead and just kind of, uh, you know, think about and compare and contrast kind of the, the old ColecoVision versus the new ColecoVision if we, you know, take with a gigantic grain of salt that this is more or less what the final product would look like. The original ColecoVision was a joke. <laughs> It was a, it wasn't even a good joke. I skipped over to the ColecoVision, I'm sorry to say. Don't you mean you're not sorry to say unless you really like playing video games on a telephone pad? <laughs> yeah. It, it was literally a square controller with a knob and what was it, six buttons? No, it's a full freaking telephone pad. Oh, it had nine buttons? No, it had 12. It had the star and pound sign. I only saw the thing once, and oh my god, and the console was beyond huge. Uh, I mean, for the t- for the time, it was actually kind of slender. I mean, the console's smaller than, like, most VCRs. Uh, it's about the size of the VCR-DVD combo I've got in my room right now. Yeah. But, I mean, it, it's, it, it, it was, it was small for its time. Not really when you've got stuff like the NES coming out, like, a few years later, that's hmm. a box. Yeah, the Genesis at the time. Yeah, it's actually, like, Genesis, the, the third generation of the Genesis was tiny. Yeah. I think even the Atari had it be back then. Yeah, I think the Atari is a, the Atari is about the same footprint. The Atari 2600, of course, I believe has about the same footprint. Hold on. When was the ColecoVision out again? It was. It was a few years after Atari. It was. It was right after the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Nineteen eighty two. Yeah. Ah uh, shit. What else was that? No Jaguar's too late. Yep, Jaguar's too late. It would have been NES, Atari, and um, what else? Well, no, because the NES didn't hit until eighty five. Oh yeah, sure. It would have been. Uh, the LED fucking games. Hmm. The LED the, fucking games? The LED games, you know, where you'd actually play football and it was just a red dot going across the screen and back again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's got me thinking about Game & Watches. <laughs> I think that's what he's talking about. No, there were no LEDs in Game & Watches. No, not Game & Watches. It was... Oh, my God. It was the predecessor to the Nintendo Game Boy. Oh, were you talking about the Virtual Boy? I'm not sure if it was a Virtual Boy. It was games that, you know, like had 50-yard dash. Uh-huh. Uh, it was a football game. <laughs> and all that you had, here was your gaming console. It was sort of like the Game Boy. And then this red dot would go across the screen indicating if you had ran 10 yards, passed 10 yards... Or anything like that. And that was the whole premise of the game. This red dot would move. <laughs> the red dot would move. Green. That was it. How do I know? I was subject to it. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Your childhood must have been painful. <laughs> I know the struggle. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no. Really? I know the struggle. And Nintendo was heaven. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just—it's such a weird, it's such a weird idea. Like, I, I really, I would love to know. Like, even we, we live in an age of like the world's thickest nostalgia glasses. But even yeah. with those really, really thick nostalgia glasses. And especially with how much, you know, I follow, you know, the industry on a daily basis, I can't remember the last time I heard anyone ever speak fondly about the ColecoVision. Um, one podcast out there, I'm going to plug it right now, Video, the world-famous video game show. That was the last time, but that's just because 
they're diehard retro fans. You gotta be real diehard. They're diehard. Uh, one of them is. Like, even the Angry Video Game Nerd did an episode on just how bad the ColecoVision is. Yeah. But if I remember, I'll have to uh, link that in the show notes down in the description, along with the original article that we're reading. Which, um, it might be a good idea to um, uh, go ahead and, uh, uh, you know, mention who we got this article from. You know, sort our sources and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, this is an article from TheVerge.com. There you go. It was by Andrew Webster. Mm. Yeah, I don't know any of the employees for The Verge, so I can't say much. I know Kotaku, The Escapist, and of course the Giant Bomb staff, but as far as employees for The Verge, nope, I don't know any other writers, <laughs> so I can't say much there. Well, they got their due credit. Yes, they did. Now they can't sue us. <laughs> Like, I just wish with the picture they gave us, they would have given us a picture of a cartridge. That's yeah! That's from this entire thing. Yeah! It's painful to look at it without a cartridge in it. Yeah! I'm I'm but really kind of with you. where the cartridge goes! <laughs> Hold on, just a second. If you both look at the front of this thing, I'm just speculating. Okay. I was going to say, PS4, you can have, like, up to four controllers, right? Huh? Look at the front of this thing. You've got three gray outs. Yeah. Like, is... Is multiplayer a thing? I mean, I... You could assume that the middle one's a power light, and then the one on the left and the right are for player one and player two? No, you can look at the top. There's your power button. That's what I'm oh. assuming. Oh, yeah, there is a power light there. You're right. So, nope, that, that idea is out. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure... I know if they're, according to the article, it will accurately play compilations of favorite games from the past as well as future games in 16-32-bit style. And you got to remember, arcade games from back then, you maybe have two... Two. 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 So, going forward, is it going to be... How many players are we going to be talking about? I don't know. That, that would be really interesting, though, if like future developers were limited to only two-player co-op. Oh, crap. Yeah, you didn't think about that. <laughs> yeah, there's an old mother... Up waiting to happen. <sighs> like that's the thing is like it's so easy to say that this thing is just a gigantic pile of fail waiting to happen, but with what it's based off of the original Coleco vision of all you know things to be inspired by for you know retro gaming, like it's built on a foundational idea of fail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is the literal. The ColecoVision was the birth and the fail of video games. Like, literally, the ColecoVision came out, like, it basically a year and change before the great video game crash. Exactly. I... I just can't see this being... Well, I can see it being a good console for retro games, but... Getting anybody to develop for it's going to be a nightmare. Well, like, this is the thing, and once again, this is where I where I was going with my, my question about how these cartridges are going to work. If they choose to use an old school style pin set, and they do their own, you know, chipsets in the motherboard and with the processor and everything else, then yeah, it's going to be dead in the water immediately. But if it's just using you know, a standard, you know, x86 processor and then doing some cheap emul emulation on the top of it and you're just plugging in cartridges and the connector for the cartridge is actually really just, you know, a flash-based memory storage, then it's going to be a little easier to have people come over purely because of the fact that what you're going to get is you're going to get the usual port-happy people and, like, indie devs 
especially if it's easy to port their content, indie devs are going to fall in love with this thing to some degree. Not all of them, but a handful. Yeah. And it's going to be a really big port house if they, like I said, they use, you know, basic x86 components and, you know, a flash-based memory storage. But if they do that, then the consumer who's looking for that really old-school cartridge feel is going to know that it ain't right. They're going to know when they pick up that cartridge and they look at the connector and everything else, they're just going to know that it's... It's 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 a bad bad mirage. Hold on, wait a second. What is that? It's got, we're zooming in on the picture on it. The front of the console has four USB ports on it. Uh huh. Yes, it does. Hmm. Wireless dongle, or is it is it going to be wireless via dongle controllers? Unless you plug it in to sync it. That might be. This seems freaking weird. Pulling <laughs> <sighs> it up closer. This thing has an indentation right in the middle of it. It is not solid. Yeah, no, it's got that indentation in the middle, and it also has like a weird, like, cutout, uh, like, almost kind of oval shape that's by the thing that we assume is the power light. And I'm assuming that's where the cartridges would go in. I'm assuming that's the cartridge slot. The same kind of style as you'd have in an N64 or a Genesis. Yeah, but it's got four USB ports on the front of it. What looks like uh, ports, at least. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Sorry, I got really curious about where you're going to be able to put your fucking cartridge. And then I saw that. Yeah, that looks like pins right there in front of it, where you put your USB. USB stick? I... I don't know. <laughs> I wish they'd give me a different angle on the controller now. <laughs> now, now you want to see if there's a little place where a cable goes in the front? Yes. <laughs> the other big thing with this, whether it's going to fail or take off, is definitely the price point. Oh, hell yeah. Because if you look like at the Atari Flashback, when it first came out and they wanted like 90 bucks for it. Yeah. And it bombed, and I was selling them at Walmart for like twenty. Yep. Do we know how much a retron system is going for right now? Uh, depending on how many consoles you want in it, basically between forty and seventy dollars. Okay. If that's any type of price point. Should be about a fifty dollar console. Which once again puts it in Uya territory. Yeah. Oh man! Oh man! We haven't even think. We haven't even thought about that. Imagine if this damn thing actually is Android based, and we just don't know it yet. Uh, hang on. And it's just an uh, emulator. Would not require internet connection or software updates. Well, no shit. <laughs> if it was Android based, wouldn't it? You'd be able to update, yeah. Well, no, because they just lock it down. They just use, you know, like, 4.2 old version of KitKat that they have locked down that they know that the emulation programs and all the programs that they're running off of it they've built for it are stable, and they just have it locked down. In that case, uh, Coleco is either paying some big bucks to Google... Or Android, or Android is paying some big bucks to Coleco. <laughs> well, no, Android's an open platform. Really? Yes. That's the reason why there's only one iPhone, and there's 30 million different phones using Android. True. Google makes their money because Android forces you to be in the Google ecosystem, and they just want to data mine the frick out of you. Yeah, I get data mine the frick out of Google. 
Oh, yeah. All right, so to close this out, um, I'm just going to throw out a couple of just kind of rapid-fire questions, just uh, simple thoughts, just, you know, a couple of closing questions here to see how everyone feels. Um, let's just go ahead and start with um, uh, number one. Uh, do you think it's going to be an entirely custom-designed chipset, entirely custom-designed hardware with entirely custom-designed, you know, software and operating system? Or do you think they're going to go with just straight-up x86 or Android, run an emulator on it, and call it good? I'm thinking it's got to be emulated to keep people happy. Exactly. That's why I'm leaning towards right now because... If they decide to go backwards compatible with older Coleco titles, mm -hmm. that's the way I would see doing it as an emulator. Which that doesn't necessarily... It says, it says you know, compilations of old games. So obviously this thing's not going to be backwards compatible with your actual old Coleco carts. It says compilations, I believe. It says... Uh, just for the game... Have been announced, and it's unclear if the console will be backward compatible with older Coleco titles. Yeah, but what I'm saying that it, they say that they're going to develop new titles for it, as well as I believe they say compilations of yeah. classic games. They do. I'm just trying. I'm just speculating on whether or not an emulator will be part of this system. Because if you're wanting to go back to, well. Older Coleco titles, that's where you most likely going to have to go. Yep. Because God knows. Nobody kept the freaking cartridges. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alright, there's an interesting question, number two, for you guys. Do you think that this news will drive up the price and sell of Coleco cartridges on eBay? Um. There's a possibility of it, I believe, but the thing is, is they have not announced that it is backwards compatible yet. Yeah, but you know how people like to freak out. Um, is there a ticker on how many re how many views the story's gotten? I'm just curious. <laughs> no, not during not not during the live stream. It's been shared eleven thousand times on Facebook. Tweet, no clue. Oh man. But and it's been pinged twice. Mm. The retro market is so fucked up as it is. It just may run up the price. Yep. Because God knows I've been, I know I'm a little bit of a retro collector. A little bit? A little bit. A little bit. Because now Genesis is starting to go up in price. Yep. If this has any bearing on Coleco Vision, as crappy as it was, <laughs> you might see a ten dollar game go to thirty. Yep. If not higher. Yep. All right. Um, question number three. With this news coming out, and with them saying that, you know, be, being confident enough to actually kind of release this as an article way ahead of time of attempting their second round of fundraising. Do do you guys believe that they have either a third party investor or some actual money in the bank to actually make this happen if the Kickstarter bombs out just the way that their Indiegogo fund did? I understand they have to have somebody in mind for this. Because for them to actually go forward and say that the first time you're going to see this console is at the New York Toy Fair in February, yeah, somebody has got to be footing the bill in case they don't raise the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can agree with that because, I mean, if the Indiegogo campaign failed for the retro VGS and this is just a rebranding of it, then they apparently... Had the, the money, money to buy this retro views GS to rebrand. Mm. Buy the tech and rebrand it, yeah. So they apparently got some form of funding somewhere. Mm. Next question Do you think that they'll actually be at the toy show next year? 
Do you think that this actually happens and that they actually have anything even resembling a fully working prototype available for people to demo in any way, shape, or form that soon? This is an article from The Verge, a, a source that I have never heard of until today. I'm not willing to bet money on them being there, but it will certainly be interesting and I hope that they will be there. As odd as that may sound. <laughs> okay, last question. Go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, just the final thoughts uh, before we do our final thoughts on this. Um, scale of 1 to 10. Okay? 1, the damn thing never sees the light of day and it does not retail at all and the only people who maybe get one are a couple of Kickstarter backers, and it never hits retail, re, re, retail shelves. Mm-hmm. On a scale of 1 to 10, where that's 1, and 10 being that the system is successful enough for it to continue to live on for many, we'll say the next five years, making a steady profit. Where do you place this? Oh, I presented about a three. You're about right there with me. I'm giving them a four. I'm giving them a two. Okay, we're all low into the spectrum, but I'm optimistic, apparently. (laughs) Oh, man. Oh, man. Well, I guess now we all know where we stand on this. I just want to have a game for it. <laughs> During the New York Toy Fair in February. I just want to see what the fucking games look like. <laughs> you're, you're, just, you're just happy. If this thing just shows up, period, at the Toy Fair next year, that's enough for you and you can die happy? Yeah. I just want to see it. <laughs> Uh, I guess that actually, I guess I missed one final question here. Then, um, what do you think the odds are that the finished product, assuming that it ever comes out, looks anything like those pictures? Looking at the pictures. <laughs> um. Hmm. I think. Plausible? It could happen, maybe? I just still don't see the slot to put the cartridge in. <laughs> maybe you plug it into the USB ports on the front? I don't know. Because, uh, like I said, they, they, they say, you know, the big, you know, they say, you know, the plastic cartridge with clamshell. So, that <laughs> is, is it a clamshell thumb drive? <laughs> I just thought a very pertinent question. What does the retro VGS look like? I don't have a damn clue. That'd be prudent to find out the information on that. Because if they just used the picture from the old retro VGS and slapped a uh, ColecoVision chame- chameleon on it, then it's going to look like that. <laughs> ship you the finished product and you, you buy it in stores and it's actually just straight up still got the sticker on it you rip off the sticker just big red letters VGS no it's on there it's no, not a sticker it's a little bit closer <laughs> you can almost see the outline <laughs> that's not the pixelation that's the pixelation on your TV you're crazy no that's not pixelation on my thing. It does the same thing here. <laughs> <laughs> I may be wrong, but that looks like an effing sticker. He 
He's on to the proof of the photoshopped image. <laughs> Why would there be an error there? <laughs> Come on, even like that. It's still there. <laughs> I'm reading wrong. Mike, doing the hardcore investigative journalistic like work that the rest of us just aren't willing to do. <laughs> yeah, I apparently involved in three inches from the TV. <laughs> we discussed this already! That's gonna get involved, period! <laughs> no, he's in a foot! He was like nose against the TV. No, he was the one saying that the controllers won't work unless you're three inches away from the TV. <laughs> yes, I did. Oh, God. Uh, I'm right. They just took a sticker and put it on the retro BGS. Okay, I'm settling this one for Brock. Come here, Fawn. Come here, Fawn. <laughs> 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 Well, I was going to shut this down, but apparently first we need to see what the actual... Oh, God. Yeah, she's looking it up. Oh, God. I hope we got a slide for this. Oh, yeah. Guess we got to find at least a sketch or something of the retro VGS. <laughs> You send me a link, I'll live edit it into the show, damn it. <laughs> oh, I don't want to call these people. Call these people. Got an option to call them? <laughs> oh my god. Oh. It just got pictures of the Calico Chameleon cloud that are all over their face. Wow. They've updated. They've <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. So am I right? If that's the page, then they just essentially. No, there's no sticker, babe. There's no sticker. It's not a sticker. They still string it on. <laughs> no, that's not the way that technology works, but close enough. I'm just curious, they had a shop now button. They have a shop now. I'm just curious what they're selling. Oh, God. Magazine, game guides, and merch. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> uh, their magazines are really effing cheap. Three dollars a piece. Digital or print? That's the important question. Uh, hang on. <laughs> Did I guess into? Oh man! <laughs> My fault. I accept full responsibility. Uh. <laughs> All right. We have a Twitter account. <laughs> Would you like to pimp out their Twitter account on the show? Huh? Would you like to pimp out their Twitter account on the show? Nice. Feel free to submit questions to their Twitter. <laughs> if someone gets back to you, please let us know in the comments. <laughs> please let us know on our Facebook. On the YouTube comments, we'll read those too. Yes, we will. Oh, man. Alright, so, um, uh, Let's just go ahead and go around the table and do final thoughts here. Uh, Mike, just sum it all up for us. It's a sticker on a retro VGS. <laughs> uh, the chameleon. It's a sticker on a retro VGS. Kate, okay, final thoughts? Um, where do you put the freaking cartridge? <laughs> uh, and as for me, um... It's a project that has a possibility of failing 
in a million and one ways built on a watery mess foundation of fail already. It's, I, I really, 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 really hope that this, I hope this thing comes to the game, the, 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 the toy show, purely so we can report on it again. Yeah. <laughs> that works. That's accurate. Alrighty. Well, thank you guys. It has been a blast as always. Um, once again, uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the GMA Transmission Station for the latest in all of your gaming news, whether it be about the Big Three or apparently Coleco. <laughs> uh, and uh, if you do end up uh, catching this later and uh, watching this later on, don't worry. We do check the comments regularly, and uh, we will get back to you, and uh, we are more than willing to have a nice little conversation down there. Uh, the original article from The Verge will be in the description so that you can read it for yourselves. And for GMA Transmission Station, I'm James Leffingwell. Michael Deal, a.k.a. The Real Deal. <laughs> the Real Deal. And Kate Harmon, a.k.a. Kate Monster. <laughs> uh, it's been a